I'm looking at the team, and I think this is probably the best final win that uh, uh, any of the Australian history of uh, wins that we've had um, we've put on the table. I, I just think the way that the guys came back, especially after South Africa, where they lost a couple of one days, they lost two one days out the start. We were talking earlier on in the tournament about where Australia losing it. And it was basically Zampa the spinner. We didn't have a spare spinner. He had to stand up. I didn't realise that he was injured at the time, but he had a bit of a bad back, but he got that right. And once he uh, started to fire, all of a sudden Australia uh, started to win a few games and get that momentum going forward. I think if you look at their balance too, they didn't have a fifth bowler, really. They used Maxwell. Uh, they used Stoinis when he was available. And then they started to use Head of Marsh at the back end as well. So going in there with four frontline bowlers and a very much a part-time bowler, uh, I, I think they really got their balance right out the back end. And Hoggy, we we sat on on this very show what it felt what feels like about three years ago, but it actually it was only six weeks ago when Australia had lost their first two games. We we're trying to work out what you know what the game plan was. They only had fourteen men out there. Travis Head was at home, didn't have a second spinner. Even I put a question to you: Should they send for Nathan Lyon because Adam Zampa wasn't working? Was it was it as simple as what you've just mentioned there? Zampa getting fit. And do you feel Pat Cummins just sort of grew into that 50-over role as, as Australia captain? Yeah, I, th I thought Pat Cummins uh, marshaled his troops extremely well and that, they took a huge risk there not having a spare spinner. I wouldn't have gone with Nathan Lyon when we were discussing that. I probably would have gone with the Kuhneman left armour because if you're going to play two spinners, it would have been against India, especially uh, that you're going to play them twice within the tournament and in a final. Uh, and, uh, you know, India were always going to prepare a wicket that's going to suit the home team. I agree that you should be able to do that. You should have an advantage on your home team. It's up to uh, other teams to come over and knock them off their off their um, off their spot. But Pat Cummins was sensational. Uh, the way that you use Lies Lavashane instead of going with Stoinis with an extra all rounder was just sensational. Uh, I thought that was the masterpiece because when you're in a final, you're under pressure. Uh, finals generally aren't going to go over 300 runs, um, especially on those wickets over there. You need someone who's solid, who can stabilise the innings in the in the middle, and that was Lavashane. So I, I just thought they got the balance right out the back end. And um, losing those first two games, they didn't lose their marbles. Uh, they didn't panic. They just thought, this is our game plan. Let's get the structure right. They got rid of, um, actually going back there, they got rid of Carey and brought Inglis in very early as well. And I thought that was a bit of a rush decision. But obviously the coach is there, the captain is there. They, they're seeing the mental aspect of their players as well. And uh, they made those changes early and they stuck to their guns right at the end. And that was just um, an unbelievable performance from Australia. Also fairly unbelievable is the Travis Head story. Um, Pat Cummins was uh, telling the world after the final that Andrew McDonald had uh, had a sleepless night just before the squad was announced. And he went to Pat Cummins and he said, we need Trav. He might not be fit for the first four games, but we need him in the squad. And man of the match in the World Test Championship final in June, man of the match in the World Cup final, uh, semi-final against South Africa, joins a pantheon of greats with a century in the final. Um, it is. It is. It was an extraordinary show of faith, and and even more extraordinary payment of that faith from from Travis Head. Uh, he's um he's quite the story. Oh, it, it is. And uh, when you've got someone of that talent, especially in that format, that's very aggressive out the top and has had a lot of success and also did well in the World Test Championship final, just gone. Um, and the way that his was, uh, career was forming, um, you know, he was just growing in stature and uh, he was playing the best cricket of his life. So you had to back him in. And a full credit to Andrew McDonald and Cummins for sitting down there and going, right, we've got to take this risk, even though we're missing for four games. You look at a couple of World Cups, uh, 2003 and 2007. We didn't have Darren Lehman for a couple of games. I think there was uh, someone else that was injured in that particular tournament as well. Uh, so we missed them for the first four games. Uh, and then uh, 2007, Andrew Simons was out for, the, uh, for a couple of games as well. So Australia, when, when they look at those particular scenarios, they really sum up the value of that particular player and how that player can turn the tournament around out the back end. And uh, that's that's what they thought about Travis Head. They thought he could come in and uh, and be that match winner. And it, it just paid off. It, was, uh, it, it just shows that you've got to have faith in players that are out, there, uh, out the top of their game. 
Even though and Huggy, Huggy last, you know, after the game, me and John Norman talked about the players now that have just won the World Cup. Seven of them, I think, were involved in 2015. Talking about their legacy and can can you? I honestly can't even think of trying to pick an, an Australian all-time greatest eleven, especially a World Cup eleven. Um, because when you, you look and people will say, oh, well, that's disrespectful to the players that are playing now. But I'm thinking, how on earth does someone like David Warner, who is a World Cup you know, superstar, get in in front of Adam Gilchrist and Matty Hayden? But I'm thinking about the players that I've played that's going. But one player I said, no matter you know what greats played during your time, Huggy, and possibly just before, I still think Mitchell Stark needs to find a place because in, in World Cup semifinals and World Cup finals, Mitchell Stark has constantly stood up. You know, first ball, McCollum in the MCG, three for 50 in a World Cup final in India. Um, Mitchell Stark, you know, he has his days where he's, you know, wayward and he has his hot and cold days. But when the World Cup's been on, Mitchell Stark has stood up in, in, in both 50, 50, both competitions that Australia have won in the last eight years. Oh, definitely. And I, I think if you look out at the Australians, the, the way that they prepare, um, that they make sure that they prepare what are the big tournaments, what are the big games that we've got to play. And if you look out Mitchell Stark, he's been pre- preparing his body for Test Cricket, the Ashes series that was uh, that, that just gone over in England. Then he had a bit of a break. Then he was just starting to get that form just before the World Cup. And as the World Cup went on, he, uh, he was starting to grow his legs again. And he's vital cog of that Australian lineup to uh, whether it's Test Cricket or the short form of the game, the way that he swings the ball and his, and his pace as well. Um, I, look, I look at the six World Cups that Australia have won in the past. There is no way that you could leave Mitchell Stark out. He's probably one of the best left arm uh, fast bowlers that we've we've had. Uh, the only bowler that you think about putting in front of him would be uh, probably Mitchell Johnson with his extra pace. Uh, he's slightly quicker than uh, than Mitchell Stark, but um, I, I still think Mitchell Stark's probably in front of Mitchell Johnson in 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 that regard. And that's no disrespect of Mitchell Johnson. It's just a huge respect for Mitchell Stark. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.